Hi, it's Ian from the Postal Hub Podcast. And Marek from Last Mile Experts. And we are The Last Mile Profits. This is the last word on The Last Mile. Marek, just recently Vice published an article about Amazon's root optimization algorithm. Now, you know what? If you'd gone back a few years and said to me, Ian, one day Vice or Motherboard, which is part of Vice, will publish an article about root optimization, I would have said, you're out of your mind. There's no way anybody outside of the delivery world wants to know about root optimization algorithms and things like this. Yet this article here is saying that Amazon delivery drivers in the USA are having issues with Amazon root optimization software, that it's asking them to cross busy roads to make deliveries and things like that. Now, let's start at the beginning here, Matic. Root optimization software, what is the point of it? What is its actual aim here? What is it really going to do? Well, I'll just add one thing before I answer the question. I was shocked because we had a little bit of a LinkedIn post on this and it got an awful lot of interest. So I, I was shocked just how many people are interested in this area. But that's just as an aside. What it really gives you is it gives you two things. Number one, if it is properly operated, it makes your last mile more efficient. But there's one other important element. It is fundamental if you're going to offer time windows and interactive delivery management with your consignees, because you need to know, according to the route plan, when you're going to be at Ian Kerr's address, when you're going to be at Marek Rodzicki's address, etc. There's another aspect to it, which is safety. So if you can avoid, via the route optimization algorithm, you can avoid troublesome intersections or making left-hand turns or right-hand turns, depending on which side of the road you drive on. I mean, that was... Was it uh, UPS's Orion system? I think they, they worked out if they could eliminate, it would be left-hand turns in certain areas. They could shave time off and make it more safe for their drivers. So there are those sort of key elements. And it's not really, I don't want to say it's not new, but the idea of route optimization itself is not, like it's not fresh out of the box in the last few months. I guess you mentioned time windows and things like that. So so yes, Ian, it, it is very, very important. If you're going to offer dynamic windows or any sort of the elements of interactivity, you've got to be able to have really good data on, you know, what's happening, what's changing, because it will be that you've planned to be at an address at a certain time, there's a jam, an accident, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, this is something that it's, it's not optional anymore. You've got to have it. What is interesting thing in, in this case is that drivers are alleging that, that actually Amazon's algorithms and tools are actually putting them in danger. That's something that really surprises me. It is, it is a surprising thing, uh, especially since Amazon copped a bit of heat over the last couple of years for safety in the last mile, even though you know, we know that Amazon will say you know, they're independent drivers and so on and so forth. But just the same, it reflects badly upon the Amazon brand. And that's why I mentioned safety before when it comes to route optimization. So if the algorithm is telling drivers to park on one side of the road to deliver to the other side of the road, that's all well and good if you're in a quiet suburban street. But if that driver then has to cross, instead of a quiet suburban street, a four-lane highway, well, that's something surely that the algorithm should have plugged into. It should be able to pick up, via whatever dark magic these algorithms work, it should be able to pick up that it's a four-lane highway and you can't ask the driver to cross to the other side. The driver should actually only deliver to that side of the road. I think, Ian, first of all, you're right. And, and, and to, to, to actually be a little bit fair to Amazon, they are quite obsessed with safety. I'm sure whatever happens, it's not a conscious decision. The other thing is, if you think about it, you're right. It's not a super complicated algorithm to be able to say that if it is a road that has more than two carriageways, people don't cross it. But what the map might show is that there are traffic lights and it may be that the algorithm or the routing tool is telling the driver to go 50 meters to the lights and cross. He doesn't do that and then blames the system. I'm not saying that's the case, but it may well be because I would be shocked, Ian, if the software made them do that. Point one. Point two, I reckon that there are tools in most cases whereby you can inform because the, most of this technology learns. So it learns if an address is counterintuitive. I'm sure that there would be options the driver can say, look, this is a dangerous crossing, press a button or something like that. So we need to understand maybe somebody from Amazon could, maybe my friend like Russell Algor, if he's watching, he could say, look, guys, hold on a minute. You're missing some of the facts because I, I think we probably are. The other point that was raised in this article was about multiple drops per stop. There was a 
complaints from some of the drivers saying that they'd have the, the algorithm would say to stop somewhere and then you'd have to deliver parcels to multiple residences in the in the vicinity of the van. Now this is not a new concept at all. I mean, back when I was a boy, that's how the posties would do it. They drive their their well their Ute where I used to live. We had postie had a Ute. Stop the Ute, get out and deliver to six or eight or however many households around around the, the Ute because we'd driven delivering letters and parcels everybody and then drive to the next stop. So the idea of doing multiple drops per stop is not a new one, but you'd usually be doing them in a fairly dense little area rather than having to walk up the street or down the street or whatever it might be. Mark, do you, what is, what's your experience there? I think it, it, it is a big question. And I think where it becomes emotive is where the carrier will say, hold on a minute, we're paying you per stop, not per parcel. That's when people get quite sensitive. And the, the, the rationale behind it is your effort is to drive to and park at a stop. If you're delivering, the rationale goes further to say that if you're delivering 10 parcels or 15 or five, it doesn't really make much difference if they're not huge. And on that basis, you should pay per stop with maybe a very small incremental fee per parcel. Now, what, that's OK if the stop is really one doorstep. If the stop becomes several doorsteps in an area close by, well, then I think there is a valid case on the part of the courier to say, hold on a minute. Well, yeah, you're calling this one stop, but I'm having to go several hundred meters further away. So I think the question is just how how wide is the definition of a stop? From my perspective, the fair way to do this is to say a stop is if it's in one building. And of course, guess what? <laughs> that could also be complicated because if the building is a shopping center, you know, we could debate if one store is at one end of the shopping center, the other's at the other, is that a stop? That's one example. You might have apartment buildings with multiple elevators or multiple stairs or a complex within there. So, I mean, I would say that the uh, per parcel rate is a is a more fair way to compensate drivers, especially if you're dealing with a suburban environment. And what's that magical figure that's bandied about? You know, the 1.2 parcels per drop. Yeah. I mean, typically, yeah, you're going to be doing mostly one parcel per stop. But Oh, but man. that's where I'm going to argue with you, and I'll tell you why. You it's going to say go parcel to... lockers, everybody. Wait for it. I am. Oh, you, you got it. <laughs> you go to a parcel locker, and it really is convenient. You've got 50 or 60 parcels yeah. in one stop. You can't pay per parcel. It's a, very different, can... it's a very different concept, though, I would say. If you're delivering to a parcel locker or to a Pudo point, how that's all handled is a very different. Oh, we got, we've gone a long way from talking about Amazon's root algorithm <laughs> Optimization we are, but, but, Ian, but, but it's it relevant and important. How complicated yeah. it is, isn't it? The, the issue is complicated, and, and this is relevant. I mean, I think what will be really interesting is to get your feedback and questions, because from from my perspective, it, it is a very important issue, and I'd love to hear from guys from Amazon or from other big players who have these algorithms who can A, put us out of our misery and tell us, hey guys, you're wrong, or say, yeah, it is an issue. And maybe together through the last mile profits, we can actually find a solution that both gives efficiency and something that's very important, safety to the guys and girls out there delivering. I can predict now who's going to comment below on this post, Matic. But I'm looking forward to it because there there are a lot of things to discuss. We've, we've talked about efficiency. We've talked about safety. We've talked about time windows and the flexibility of delivery. And the other part of it is, of course, communicating with the customer. And if the customer changes their mind mid, mid route, they say, actually, I don't want to hear anymore. The algorithm has to be able to take into account those sorts of uh, in-flight changes. By the way, I think that we should say in transit, not in flight, unless, of course, it's being delivered by drone. But, Mark, <laughs> we're going to wrap it up here. Everybody, please fill the comments section with reasons why I've missed the point or whatever it might be. And it should be an interesting discussion. Mark Krzyzewski, thanks for being part of The Last Mile Profits today. Thank you, and thank you, everybody.